Hello, this is Covenant Calendar, and we're going to be doing a short introduction to the Gospel of John. And this is for parts two and three. Yahusha and the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles. What is Yahusha's witness? What does Yahusha mean by my time? Many love the Gospel of John. How many know why John 7 is so very important? If ever, ever in your journey you have heard, Yahusha observed the feasts of the Jews and wondered if in fact it were true and desired scriptural evidences, then this study in John 7 will be of great interest to you. Will we discover the reason why John 7 is included in the Gospels? How many have heard this before? that actions speak louder than words. And what does this have to do with John 7? Yahuwah's true calendar has been discovered. John 7 has interesting clues. It's called the Everlasting Blood Ratified Covenant Calendar, set down from the foundation of the world. There is a calendar language in John 7. It's very explicit once you start understanding the lingo. What is John exposing about the lunar calendar of the unbelieving Jews with regards to their Feast of Tabernacles? Why is it the Feast of the Jews? Why isn't it the Feast of Yahuwah, as declared in Leviticus 23? Why did Yahusha not speak openly about his covenant calendar in John 7? In other words... Why don't we find the evidence of what we want to see written in red words in the Gospels? Contrast that with Yahusha's words in John 7, verse 19. Please pay attention to these words. Remember, they were at the Feast of the Jews. Yahusha, speaking to the Pharisees, said this, Did not Moshe give you the Torah? And yet not one of you keepeth the Torah. Why would he say that? Let's ponder some other concepts. Psalms 78 verses 2 to 4. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of Yahuwah. So how does this align with Matthew 13? Well, here's an answer. Yahusha taught in parables what had already been uttered ages before. Matthew 13, 35 tells us, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things from which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Are the seven parables in Matthew 13 a secret about Yahuwah's covenant calendar? No. These parables to the multitudes were about other important details the people were never taught. Did you know that when it comes to the covenant calendar details, they are not ever kept secret? And yet, covenant calendar details are rarely uttered by Yahusha in the Gospels. So if they're not spoken by Yahusha, how did he get his message across to us? Because every detail needed to understand Yahuwah's beautiful covenant calendar has already been uttered. How would it be uttered? One, by Yahuwah, who has always spoken plainly to his people of his appointed times from the beginning. Two, by Moshe from the top of Mount Sinai, including all 40 years through the wilderness. Number three, through many appointed judges for every situation and difficulty of his people after Joshua died. Number four, through many ordained prophets in all of their solemn assemblies of their tribes throughout the Old Testament. And number five, Yahuwah did not 
deliver his oracles in any obscure or ambiguous fashion, but so that his people might understand clearly. Number six, Yahuwah was their instructor to enlighten their eyes and their direct their steps. Everything was spoken beforehand for the way of deliverance and happiness. Everything that had to be spoken for honoring Yahuwah's covenant calendar had been spoken very clearly before the gospel ministry of Yahusha. Did you know that when Yahusha arrives for his gospel ministry as the greatest prophet there ever was, there was no more need for him to speak? Why would that be? Why would speaking not be quite as important as another one of his actions? Again, action speaks louder than words. So what is next? As the second witness, Yahushua now comes with the strongest witness of all, the witness of his actions by his feet and healing hands. When his feet did not carry him to attend to the lunar tabernacles of the unbelieving Jews on their first Sukkot Shabbat, should that be a blaring message everyone should be paying attention to? How is it that Yahushua can miss out on the first Shabbat of that Sukkot and not be a sinner? The questions are, what was John's calendar message of the silent footsteps of Yahushua's feet? The silent footsteps of Yahushua's feet. How silent are they? Could they be actually thunderous? Footsteps, thunderous witnessing footsteps of Yahushua's feet? Number two, what other messages have we missed because we insist there has to be red words written in the Gospels? Why is it there's no red letters under his feet? Are we paying attention to his footsteps? If you want to know, come and see. It's all about Yahusha's covenant calendar. And if you've enjoyed this introduction today, please join us live for parts two and three. And you can sign up with the Covenant Calendar Club at the address there, studythecalendar.com. Sign up for the Friday and Shabbat Zoom meetings, and that will include live discussion. And uh, yes, all studies can be downloaded for free. And we say shalom to each one of you. Thank you.